This is Algebra Lesson 8-1, Adding and Subtracting Polynomials. Now there's a lot of vocabulary in this section, which is really critical to understanding this entire chapter. So I'll try to go through it slowly, and hopefully you'll understand. If I write down examples, I expect you to put the examples into your notes, please, because that will be very helpful for you. All right, the first vocabulary word is monomial. A monomial is an expression that is a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. For example, 4 is a monomial. 3x is a monomial. Negative 7x to the third y squared z is also a monomial. You know it's a monomial because there is no addition or subtraction symbol between numbers. There's just multiplication. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of its variables. For a non-zero constant, the degree is zero. So for example, the degree of 4 is zero. Okay, so the degree of 4 is equal to zero. The degree of 3x is equal to 1 because x is to the first power. The degree of negative 7x to the third y squared z is 3 plus 2, which is 5, plus the 1 for the z, which is 6. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. So everything that I listed under a monomial was a polynomial. Every monomial is a polynomial, but not every polynomial is a monomial. Okay, it's kind of like every poodle is a dog, but not every dog you see is a poodle. So a polynomial is a monomial, like 3x, or it could be something as sophisticated as 2x squared plus 6x minus 4. Both of those are polynomials. One's a one-term polynomial, called a monomial, and one is a three-termed polynomial, called a trinomial. A binomial is a polynomial with exactly two terms, like 2x minus 3, or x plus 7. A trinomial is a polynomial with exactly three terms, 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 is a trinomial. Now the standard form of a polynomial, I've actually been writing all of my polynomials in standard form because I'm kind of used to standard form, so I, I'm, that's a habit that I have that I always write them in standard form. Standard form of a polynomial is a polynomial is written so that the degree of its monomials decrease from left to right and normally alphabetically. Okay, So standard form is like 4x to the fifth minus 3x to the third plus 2x squared minus x plus 6. Notice it decreases. I went from the fifth degree, third degree, second degree, first degree, no degree. The coefficient is the numerical factor of the term. So in 4x to the fifth, the coefficient is 4. Like terms. We've talked about like terms before, but it's really critical that you understand like terms in this particular chapter. Like terms are terms whose variable factors are exactly the same. The same variable raised to the same degree. So 4x to the fifth and negative 13x to the fifth are like terms. Uh, 2x to the third y squared z and 4x to the third y squared z are like terms because they all have an x to the third, a y squared, and a z. Same variables raised to the same power. The leading term is the term with the highest degree. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the leading term. Okay. And the degree of the polynomial is the highest degree of its terms. Okay. So it's whichever term has the highest degree, that's the degree of your polynomial. Okay, so that's a lot of vocabulary words, but they're all really important. So we're going to take a look at some monomials, and we're going to figure out the degree of each one of these monomials. Remember what I said. By definition, okay, the degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of its variables. And for a non-zero constant, which means like the first problem we have here, the degree is zero. There are no variables in 18, so the degree here is zero. In 3xy to the third, x is to the first power. So 1 plus 3 is 4, so my degree is 4. 
Here we have x to the second, y to the fourth, z to the first, so we have 2 plus 4 plus 1, which means the degree is 7. 6c, c is to the first power, so the degree is 1. 2f, g to the fifth, h squared, means f is to the first power, plus g is to the fifth power, plus h is to the second power, so that makes it to the eighth degree. Now, adding and subtracting monomials is really easy. As long as they're like terms, you just add or subtract the coefficients. You leave the variables alone. You just add, the you add or subtract the coefficients and then tack on the variable part. So here in number 6, I have negative 6x to the 4th plus 11x to the 4th. It's kind of like saying negative 6 pineapples plus 11 pineapples. I have 11 pineapples. I took 6 pineapples away. How many pineapples do I have left? I have 5. So we do negative 6 plus 11 and then we're going to just tack on the x to the fourth. So that would be 5x to the fourth. Okay. Number 7 here, we have 8x squared y minus 3x squared y. Same variable raised to the same power, so they're like terms. So we're just going to do 8 minus 3, which happens to be 5. And then we tack on the variables x squared y. Now you can classify polynomials. Polynomials have a specific way to classify them. Okay. You can classify, after you've simplified a polynomial, you can classify it, otherwise known as naming it, based on its degree or the number of the monomials it contains, or both. Okay. The degree and the number of terms is what I like to call it. So here's, I've given you a nice little table here, um, all of which are polynomials. I've given you the degree of them and a name. So 7x to the fourth. The x is to the first degree, so it's a first degree polynomial. First degree polynomials have a special name. They're called linear polynomials. It has two terms. Since it has two terms, it's a binomial. So this first one would be called a linear binomial. 3x squared plus 4x minus 9. Its degree is 2 because that's the degree of the highest term. Okay. The second degree polynomial is called a quadratic polynomial. Learn to memorize that. It has three terms. Three terms is a trinomial, which kind of makes sense. Bicycle has two wheels. Tricycle has three wheels. Bi means two. Tri means three. Our third one here, 4x to the third. The degree is to the third degree. Third degree polynomials have a special name. They're called cubic. It only has one term, so it's called a monomial. 9x to the fourth plus 36. That's a fourth degree polynomial. There is a special name for that, that polynomial, but we don't get into that until we get into Algebra 2, so I will leave that off and not try to confuse you, so we'll just call it a fourth degree. And it has two terms, so it's a binomial. And our last polynomial is 6, which is a monomial. It has degree of 0. It's called a constant because it, does, it has no variables whatsoever. It's not a coefficient. A coefficient is the number in front of the variables. So like in the term 9x to the fourth plus 36, 9 is a coefficient. 36 is a constant. Okay, it has one term, so it's called a monomial. Let's take a look at a couple of problems here that we are going to name based upon the degree and the number of terms. Okay, so we have, first of all, we have to write them in standard form. It did ask us to do that. It said put them in standard form, so that means writing them, combining any like terms that we have, and then writing them in, in, in decreasing degree. So in number 8, there's no like terms, however, it's not in standard form because the x needs to come before the 2 because x is to the first degree and the 2 has a degree of 0. So we would rewrite this as 7x minus 2. Since x is to the first degree, a first degree polynomial is called linear. And it has two terms, so it's a linear binomial. Number 9 here. I'm going to look and see if there's any common terms. Oh, there is. I have a 3x to the fifth and a negative 2x to the fifth. 3 minus 2 is 1, so I have an x to the fifth. Then I have the 7x, and then I have a minus 2. I've combined all the like terms, and then I rewrote it in descending order of the variable. Something to the fifth degree, we didn't have a fourth, we didn't have a third, we didn't have a second, but we did have a first degree. Okay, so we have x to the fifth plus 7x minus 2. Okay, it's a fifth degree polynomial. There's no special name for that yet. So we'll call it fifth degree. But it has three terms, and a three-term polynomial is called a trinomial. Number 10. 6x squared plus 7 minus 9x to the fourth. 
There are no like terms. However, it's not in standard form because we have to go from the highest variable to the lowest. So x to the fourth is higher than x to the second. So I have negative 9x to the fourth plus 6x to the second plus 7. So now it's in standard form. It is a fourth degree. Again, it has three terms, so that makes it a trinomial. And the last one, number 11 here, 3y minus 4 minus y to the third. Again, there are no like terms, but I need to uh, put that in the right form. And notice how the sign goes in front of the number, not behind the number. Sign goes in front of the number. So this is negative y to the third plus 3y minus 4. Okay. Sign goes in front of number, okay. or in this case, variable. So this is a third degree. Third degree is cubic. It is three terms, so it is a trinomial. Now we're going to do um, things besides classifying. We're also going to add and subtract polynomials. You can add polynomials by combining like terms. And there are several ways in which you can add polynomials. You can add vertically by lining up like terms and combining the coefficients, or you can add horizontally by grouping like terms. Each one has its pros and cons, and I will, depending upon what kind of a number it is, I will use each one interchangeably. Sometimes I like to write them vertically, and sometimes I like to write them horizontally. In this first problem here, I think I'm going to do it uh, horizontally, I mean vertically, excuse me, because I have a 6x squared, an x, and a constant term. I have an x squared, an x, and a constant term, so I'm just going to write 6x squared plus 3x plus 7, and I'm going to add to that. 2x squared minus 6x minus 4. Remember, when you're adding, you are just keeping all the signs in front of the numbers just the way they were before, and you're just combining like terms. Now all my like terms are, are aligned, so it's going to make it much easier for me to find them and combine them. So 6x squared plus 2x squared is 8x squared. 3x plus a negative 6x is going to be negative 3x. 7 plus negative 4 is plus 3. And then I am done. I could also do it horizontally. If we look at problem number 13 here, I'm going to add this one horizontally. Okay. So I'm going to just rewrite my first term, negative 4x to the third. Actually, I'm not even going to rewrite it. I don't need to rewrite it because it's not in a subtraction problem. So I'm just going to do some handy-dandy little things here. And I like to write it. I like to combine my like terms and put it in standard form simultaneously because it saves me time. So I'm looking at this and going, hmm, the highest degree is x to the third. So I have a negative 4x to the third and a positive 7x to the third. Negative 4 and positive 7 is 3x to the third. I have a 2x squared and no other x's that are to the second power. So that I'm just going to write down 2x squared. Then I have a 5x here and a 5x here. 5 and 5 is 10x. And last but not least, I have a negative 6 and a positive 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is minus 2. And then I've combined all my like terms. Now you can combine it like this when you are adding. You can't do that like this when you're subtracting, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to look at number 14 here. I think I'm going to do this one uh, vertically just because I like to. Okay. So when I, when I look at this, I notice that the second problem, 5x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 2x squared minus 2x, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I need to make sure I might need to leave a placeholder for a missing variable. For example, in this first part, 2x to the fourth, I don't have an x to the third, so I'm going to put plus 0x to the third, because that's just a placeholder. It just holds my position so I can line up my like terms. I don't have a zero. Uh, I don't have a zero x squared. So I mean, I don't have an x squared. But yes, I do. Never mind. I do have an x squared, and I have a negative five x squared. So I'm going to put negative five x squared. That's a weird looking five. Um, I have an x, so I have a plus four x plus five. I'm going to add to that the whole second polynomial. So that's five x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 2x squared minus 2x, and obviously plus 0. It's a placeholder. You can use 0 as a placeholder whenever you don't have a term that goes in that particular position. 
So 5 plus 2 is 7, so I have 7x to the 4th. 0 plus 7 is 7x to the 3rd. Negative 5 plus negative 2 is negative 7x squared. 4x plus negative 2x is 2x. And 5 plus 0 is 5. Okay, it makes it quite simple. Each of these methods has its pros and cons. Okay, for example, on the vertical method, you have to remember to put in a placeholder to keep all your terms lined up. But on the horizontal method, you sometimes can miss a term if it's big and it has a long string of terms. All right, let's look at a word problem. The revenue generated by a company and the cost of producing X units can be modeled by the polynomials shown below. Add the functions to determine the net profit or loss polynomial. So my revenue is 2X squared plus 120X. My cost is negative 5.5X squared minus 300X minus 8,000. So I'm just going to add these together. I'm going to do this one horizontally. So 2x squared plus 120x plus negative 0.5x squared minus 300x minus 8,000. All right, combine my like terms. I have a 2x squared and a negative 0.5x squared. 2 minus a half is 1.5, so 1.5x squared. I have a 120x and a negative 300x. Notice sign goes with the number. Okay, the sign goes in front of the number. So a positive 120 plus negative 300 is negative 180x. And I don't have anything that can pair up with the 8,000, so I'll just put that at the end, minus 8,000. So in this particular case, my profit or loss is 1.5x squared minus 180x minus 8,000. Now back in chapter one, we learned that subtraction was adding the opposite. Therefore, when you subtract a polynomial, you change each of the terms to its opposite and then you add them. And again, you can do this horizontally or vertically. Okay, for example, number 16 here, if I want to subtract this, I'm gonna keep my five x squared plus three x minus two, and I'm gonna subtract, and I'm gonna put it in parentheses, two x squared, plus 1. Okay, so if I'm going to do this right, I'm going to run this negative sign all the way through this second parenthesis. So this becomes 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 minus 2x squared minus 1. And notice I can leave, you can leave a blank space for a placeholder as, just as easily as you can put in a 0. And I just left a blank space because it was nice. So 5x squared minus 2x squared is 3x squared 3x plus nothing is 3x, and negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, because we're adding. And there we go. You change your subtraction to, to you add the opposite. So you want to change all the signs in the second parenthesis is basically what you're doing. So if I wanted to do that horizontally, like in this problem number 17, I'm going to leave the first one what it is. I'm going to put this negative sign all the way through, so this becomes negative a squared b squared plus 5ab to the third minus 3b plus 2b to the fourth. And I'm just going to rewrite my first part to a squared b squared plus 3ab to the third minus 4b to the fourth. Now I'm just going to combine like terms. And you might say, wow, there's a lot of different variables here. How do we know which one comes first? Well, I normally take the highest degree of the variable that comes in alphabetical order first. So I'm going to go with the highest degree of A. I have an A squared B squared. That seems to be my highest degree. So I have a 2A squared B squared and a negative A squared B squared. And those seem to be the only A squared B squared. So 2 minus 1 is A squared B squared. Now I'm going to go look for things that have just an A. Okay, and I've got a positive 3AB to the third and positive 5ab to the third. So 3 and 5 is 8, so that becomes 8ab to the third. And now I've got nothing left that just has, I just have b's. So it really, at this, this point in time, it doesn't really matter which order you put the rest of the polynomial, just as long as you combine your like terms. So I'm going to go with um, my b to the fourth, so I've got a negative 4b to the fourth, and a positive 2b to the 4th, so that makes that negative 2b to the 4th. 
And the only thing that I don't have paired up with anything is minus 3b. So I'm going to put a minus 3b at the end. Other people might put this in a slightly different order and standard form for this problem. Just either start with b and go down from b or start with a and go down from a. I tend to do them in alphabetical order, so I'm going to always start with a before I start with b. All right, let's do a couple more subtraction problems. Number 18. Wow, I forgot my end parenthesis on this. I actually forgot the rest of my problem. There should be a minus 4 in there. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Oops. Here, I'll even write it in black so that it makes sense. That way I won't confuse people. So there should be a minus 4. Somehow that got left off. I don't know why. It just did. I'm going to do this one um, vertically. So I'm going to have a... 8x to the third plus 6x squared minus 3x plus 5. And I'm going to subtract, I'm going to run this sign through as I'm doing it. So this is going to be minus 5x to the third. Minus a minus is a plus 3x squared minus 2x and plus 4. If you can't do that, then do what I did before, which is write it as this second parenthesis underneath with a negative sign on the outside and then rewrite it. So I've got 8x to the third minus 5x to the third is 3x to the third. 6x squared plus 3x squared is 9x squared plus 9x squared. Negative 3x plus negative 2x is negative 5x and 5 plus 4 is 9. I actually really do like the vertical positioning because my like terms are already lined up which is really, really nice when I'm going to try to add something. All right, last example problem, number 19 here. I'm just going to run this negative through. So I'm going to have 30d to the third minus 29d squared minus 3d minus 2d to the third minus d squared. I just ran the negative through the second parenthesis. And once you do that, you can get rid of the parentheses. So now I'm just going to combine like terms. Uh, my highest degree of any variable is d to the third, so I've got a 30d to the third, a minus 2d to the third is 28d to the third. And I have a negative 29d squared and a negative d squared, which means negative 1. So that's going to go to negative 30d squared. And last but not least, I have negative 3d left over. It's really important when you do these problems that you make sure your box or circle your final answer because there can be an awful lot of work involved in some of these problems and it's going to be very difficult for me to determine what your final answer is if you don't box or circle your final answer. All right, the closure question for today. What is the rule for simplifying like terms when you're adding and subtracting polynomials? In other words, can you write the rule, can you write the, um, the rule in your own words? In your own words, what is the rule for simplifying like terms when you are adding or subtracting polynomials?